The best way to get better at programming is to practice. In this example, we're going to look at errors and exceptions and what that does to your Java application. As always, these files are available for download using the link provided below in the description. We'll give you a couple seconds so you can download it and then you can follow along with us. All right, so let's get started here. There are two major types of runtime errors that you'll run into in Java. One is the error, and that's actually pretty rare. I don't think I've ever actually seen it, and that tends to be a catastrophic problem that's going to definitely shut down your application. The other, however, is an exception, and these are more minor errors that typically can be tested for. Now, because they can be tested for, we can actually check them and prevent them from causing our application to crash. That's a great thing. And Java has two types of exceptions, checked and unchecked. So I'm going to show you an unchecked exception in this example. And then in the next example, we'll actually show you how you can go in and check those unchecked exceptions to prevent your application from crashing. So here's two common ways that we're going to have an exception. One is division by zero. Clearly, you cannot divide a number by zero. So to show this, I'm just going to come in here and say double answer equals 17 divided by zero. Now, if I come in here and try to run this, you'll notice that up oh, there's an exception and it says division by zero. Okay. So at that point, it stops running your application because it doesn't know, Hey, is this exception going to cause a further chain of errors later on? Does this mean that we can't have a value that is going to be useful to another part of our application? So this is an exception. It does quote unquote crash your application. But like I said, we can check for these and prevent them from causing a bigger issue. Because it doesn't let us go any further, I need to comment that line out. And I'm going to show you a null pointer exception. And I'm going to have over here string name. Now a string name, let's say I want to print out the length of my name. So I say something like system.out.println name dot length. Okay. You're going to notice here, this is giving us an error because it says, Ooh, this variable name may not have been initialized. So this is a great example of the compiler checking for potential problems before we run the application to prevent us from doing this. If I try to run it, it's going to come up and say, Ooh, this has not been initialized. Okay. So I'm going to close it out. I'm going to say it's equal to null. So yes, I have initialized it, but the null value is no value. There's no data stored there. So this is kind of tricking the compiler. And notice the compiler gives us a warning, but it's now no longer an error. So I'm going to run this. And once again, notice I have an error, but this is the null pointer exception. And it says so right down here in my output window. And it says I can't invoke dot length because name is null. And that means that there's no object created. If there's no object created, I can't call its method. So these are two very common types of exceptions that you're going to run into in Java. These are unchecked. So notice that one, because I hadn't set it to null with the name, it, the compiler caught it and one less go. But if I could set it to null, that's something that would let me do. And a common example is if I'm reading data from a network source or from a user input, I might get null data. And so this is a common thing that we're going to run into that we have to be checking for. In our next video, we're going to look at how do we check for those types of exceptions to prevent them from crashing our application. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and make sure you're subscribed so you can see more examples on how to get better at programming.